is up guys? Welcome back to another Geekawatt video. In this video, I'm going to be building an awesome 1080p and 1440p gaming PC build for 2022 with some awesome components from NZXT, one of the latest 12th gen Intel CPUs and more. But this is no ordinary build. This video is to celebrate us gaining more than a million views in the last 30 days. A million views in a month! Oh my goodness. Thank you all for the incredible support sticking with us. I know the market's really tricky right now and we look forward to building many more PCs this year when GPUs eventually come back into stock. But I'll stop yapping about that and actually do what you came here for. Let's build an awesome gaming PC for 2022 and kick things off as usual by taking a look at our core components, otherwise referred to as the motherboard assembly. <laughs> consist of the motherboard, CPU, RAM and SSD and are all the parts that we can do before worrying about the case, the cooler and all the big bulky components. And now this motherboard right here is from MSI. It's their Z690 Force Wi-Fi. It actually has some white accents on, which I'm not gonna lie was a huge selling point for this build, obviously given our case choice. And now this comes with plenty of great features. PCIe Gen 5, Gen 4 support for your NVMe SSDs, DDR5 memory support, and a built-in rear IO that includes a plethora of USB ports, type C, two and a half gigabit ethernet, and importantly, Wi-Fi. It's not the most expensive Z690 board out there, which was also a selling point, though B660 is also worth considering for this system. I'll be installing the CPU into the motherboard first off, and with this being an overclocking ready motherboard, I have of course gone for an overclocking capable SKU of Intel's 12th gen lineup. In particular, this right here is the 12600K. Packed with Intel's latest performance and efficiency cores, it's got high clock speeds, plenty of cores for that nice multi-threaded performance, and all in all, it's just gonna work really well. When people say Intel knocked it out the park with their new 12th gen lineup, they weren't kidding, and my goodness have AMD got some catching up to do if the rumors around their next release are true. Now, into the motherboard, I'll be adding in this lovely Corsair Vengeance DDR5 memory. This is some of the better value DDR5 kits on the market, but still, let's be honest, DDR5 is not exactly cheap. And as the technology matures, DDR5 will well and truly make DDR4 obsolete. We might not be quite there yet, but for motherboards and configs like this, DDR5 and DDR4 are both worth considering. This is of course a DDR5 motherboard, dictating our component choice for this configuration. Once that's done, we can then move on to the storage option for this system. Now this right here is the MSI M480 Spatium, a Gen 4 drive with speeds in the region of 7 gigabytes a second. We'll of course be running our own numbers and we'll pop those results on your screen to make sure things well and truly stack up. With the latest Intel CPUs, storage can become a bottleneck. GPUs and processors are progressing so quickly, that is of course, if you can find anyone that will sell you one at a decent price, that storage is suddenly becoming much more important than it was just a couple of years ago. That means something like this Spatium M480 is a really, really solid choice. Now it does come with its own heatsink built in as well. So what that means for us today is that we don't need to add back on the heat spreader we just removed. Plus MSI's sort of toolless installation process also means you don't have to use a teeny tiny screwdriver like this one, although I find it might be a little bit easier yeah with a build like this one. Make sure you keep hold of this fancy uh, heatsink cover as you may need to use it again if you swap your M.2 drive configuration at a later date. Now earlier I said that we were basically done with the motherboard past these steps, but I must admit, I've got a porky pie as we say here in the UK. I have lied and deceived you all, so for that, I write a sincere letter of apology. Because actually, we have one more thing to do, and that's to take the cooler. Now we're obviously not gonna install the whole bleeding AIO radiator onto the motherboard. It's not gonna go well. But we can actually prep some of the mounting hardware we need to use because if we don't do this now It becomes a lot lot harder later once the case gets involved poking its nose in our business, right? Just kidding What we actually need to do though is we need to unbox the CPU cooler And then I'll point out which parts of it we're going to worry about now and which we'll move on to afterwards The first thing is this back plate now This is sort of a plastic flexi back plate It feels quite weak But what it will do is provide the mounting holes and hardware that our ended XT cooler needs You'll then also find the bag which includes lots of these metal weird shaped rings and some thumb screws and posts. What we need to do is we need to take out the correct ring for our Intel CPU and you can do this by seeing which ones line up with the back plate. Evidently not that one. 
This is looking a bit closer. It's literally gone on top of those stoppers. That's not its final configuration, but it does show us which are the right size. You're then also gonna find these little doodads. Now these are actually made up of two parts. So you've got here a male to male screw that looks a little something like that. And then you've got a big old meaty thumb screw which sits on top. What we want to do is add the back plate onto the rear of the motherboard, then screw the male to male posts in and loosely add the thumb screws on top as we'll be removing these later. But doing this portion of the build now makes your life a lot easier. Oh, and make sure you keep a hold of this fancy little mounting piece as this will be needed in literally two minutes time. Once you've done that, you can upgrade yourself to the next component. You can level up to the largest part of the build, the case choice for this build. NZXT's H510 Flow. I said build a lot of times there. As you can see, I've gone ahead and removed our front glass side panel, which will make installing the motherboard, conveniently the next stage of the build today, a lot, lot easier. Now, normally at this stage of the build, you'd go ahead and you'd check that all the standoffs in the case lined up with the ones on your motherboard, which for reference are located where all these little white marks are on the board. Nice and easy to spot for once. In this case though, it's an ATX chassis with ATX standoffs. They're all in exactly the right place, meaning we can very, very easily go ahead and slide the motherboard in. You will be able to see the IO shield should poke through the rear and allow us to very easily screw the motherboard into place. If you're wondering by the way, this right here is the NZXT H510 Flow, the airflow version of their famous H510 and 510 Elite. It is lacking on the RGB front, but don't worry, we're going to fix that later. First off in our next step of the build, which is of course installing the all-in-one liquid cooler. NZXT's own Kraken X63 is going to fix our RGB woes by adding some nice addressable lighting into the system. Now installing this lighting is very easy. We need to actually remove this bracket right here. It might sound silly, but remember which side is up and which side is down. Essentially, what I want to do is have the tubes at the top of the radiator. So that means installing it a little something like so. We're going to pop the fans on the front side of the case rather than behind the radiator to pull in fresh air and it will illuminate the mesh panel. So for us, that means adding two addressable RGB fans at the back and screwing them through the radiator. Once that's been done, you can screw the whole sled back in and we can finish things off with the water block. To do this, we want to pull back the bracket we talked about earlier. You want to whack this onto your cooler. So something along the lines of that is sort of there, but we want to make sure our two endpoints are exactly distant from, exactly distant, equidistant from the tubes in the middle. So basically the whole thing's symmetrical. You can install it at whatever angle you like, but I think for us today, this makes the most sense and we can pop our tubes then a little something like that. Remember to remove the four thumb screws we added on earlier. That's this one, this one, this one, and this one, as we'll use these to then secure the cooler back down. A dab of thermal paste if you haven't got some already as well, just to make that thermal bond between the CPU and the cooler as strong as we need it to be. And that's basically it as far as the CPU cooler is concerned. Now I've suddenly become slightly concerned that the GPU might not fit because of course we've got a push-pull radiator at the front plus any extra clearance. So we'll have to see. We've also got this NZXT kind of white accent piece which can interfere with GPUs. It hasn't really in this case for me before but it has in their smaller H210. It just got in the way. So let's see whether we're a bit more lucky today. Now I should talk about what this GPU actually is. It is the RTX 3060 Ti. <laughs> Dupes to the rescue. Target identified. Now, truth be told, 3060, 60 Ti, 70, any you can find at a decent price will work well. The 3060 Ti though, at MSRP, or at least compared with other inflated prices, is a bit of a bargain. It provides performance that gets scarily close to a 3070, and it gives you a huge performance upside over the 3060, especially relative to the gain a Ti card normally gives you. Remember, this is not replacing the 3060, it's just a level up. They were released basically at the same time. Now for this build, we need to take out some of our rear PCIe lanes and to do that we've got to take a screwdriver to the second and third slots so that is this one right here you can see on the camera ahead of me and the one below it lots of clattering banging and clicking associated at this stage of the video there we go and then we can push the slot back. I think it might already be done. Nope, there we go and slide. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fitting. So it won't go in completely straight, 
but that's because of this lip on the case. So probably if we angle it in, there we go, angle it in, click it into place and secure it down with those same screws. Is that into place? Yes, it is. The same screws were removed just a moment ago. That actually fit a lot easier than I thought it would. And if we get handyman DIY James out once again, we do have some more clearance. In fact, we have an additional 30 millimeters. So 30 millimeters plus whatever the length of the Supreme is. No, the Gaming X Trio. So that plus that equals total clearance left after the radiator has been installed. So something to keep an eye on if you're looking for a radiator and a GPU in the H510 series. To wrap things up then, we've got not one, but two more things left to do. The first is the power supply, NZXT C850. The C750 is a cheaper option that would also work for this build. And we're gonna swap out the two non-RGB fans for some air RGB ring fans that I also picked up. Now this video isn't gonna be a full PSU cables and wiring guide. We have got one of those on the channel, which you can find in the card section now. For now, we're gonna get these components installed though, and then we're gonna boot the system up to check out the performance numbers of our beautiful 12th gen RTX system. But first, we've got to see how good it looks in an epic glam montage. Roll that million view montage. <laughs> Now we've seen how this 3060 Ti high airflow build looks when it's all powered up for the first time, it's time to make sure the performance numbers stack up equally. On your screen now is a summary of all the results we achieved from our little 3060 Ti, and we will be diving into more detail of some of these titles as we go through. This just gives you a good idea though of the machine's power at 1080p when it comes to playing the latest titles at high frame rates. The first game we're going to look more closely at is GTA 5, where at 1080p high settings, we achieved 143 frames per second on average. 90 and 99th percentile results were strong, with the 3060 Ti showing its killer 1080p credentials. It was once again a really positive story in Battlefield 2042, where 1080p high yielded 113 frames per second on average. Ray tracing was disabled here as we chose not to opt for it this tier of build, but DLSS is of course supported too, something we did try. We actually managed to achieve 114 FPS with DLSS enabled, 1 FPS higher, but at 1440p. Results at 1440p that are better than 1080p despite the high resolution, that's kind of crazy and shows the power DLSS really has. Call of Duty Vanguard was once again uh, really, really solid as far as the numbers go. 1440p high settings gave us 95 frames per second, so just shy of 100 on average, which is perfect for these first-person shooter titles. Forza Horizon 5 is next up, and here the results were once again great. 95 FPS at 1440p Ultra. Remember, racing games, 40, 50 FPS is great, 60 is ideal, so 95 is bloody fantastic. Moving on to Halo Infinite next up, we tested out at 1080p high settings once again and achieved just shy of 130 FPS, 128 to be precise. 90 and 99th percentile results were strong, measured with both NVIDIA FrameView and MSI Afterburners Revertuner for maximum fairness. Next up is Apex Legends, 1080p high once again, 181 frames per second. Wow! To break the 150 mark in Apex is really impressive and shows this machine's ability to saturate a high frame rate 165Hz monitor. If frame rate's what you're after, Valorant, our next game, is the one for you. Where I'll be honest, a CPU inflicted bottleneck meant the frame rate at 1080 and 1440p, 378 at 1080p, and 363 at 1440p. Wrapping things up, with a bit of Fortnite, we tested at 1080p competitive settings to see what the maximum FPS we could possibly achieve was. The answer, 221. Wow. Huge frame rates for us here in Fortnite and a great set of results from our humble little airflow based system. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big old like rating, get subscribed to see more from us. Thanks for tuning in and as always, we'll see you in the next one.